Here's another game I picked up at BGGCon called Dungeon Raiders. It's by Passport Games. Now, Dungeon Raiders is a um, card game where you're basically racing through the dungeon to get out with as much treasure as possible. Here's what comes with the game. We got a rule book. Fairly simple rule book. It's only about six, seven pages here. We got these red markers, plastic. And you've got cards. So let me open these up and show you what we've got. Okay, let's go over how to set up a game of Dungeon Raiders. First thing you're going to do is you're going to take the 30 dungeon cards and you're going to shuffle these. So I'm shuffling these up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, after I shuffle them up, I'm going to randomly take six cards out of this set of 30 to give me 24 cards. For all the math geniuses out there. So, almost done shuffling here. Alright, so I shuffled these up. And I'm going to randomly remove six. Two, three. I'll take three off the bottom for good measure. So those six go out of the game without me knowing. I'll take those. Put them over into the box. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over the top 12 cards face up. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. And I have 12 face down. I'm going to take these and 12 face up. All face down, and then I'm going to shuffle a whole new pile. And you're going to leave them in their orientation because some of the rooms are sorry, I can't uh, the way the camera's positioned, you can't see me shuffling, so you'll just have to assume I'm doing it. But the um, the way the game is played, some of the rooms you can see and some of them you can't. Now when you're doing this setup, you're more than welcome to do this under the table so you don't get a glimpse of what any of the rooms are, if you'd like. I don't really think that matters, but uh, anyway. So now that I've got 24 cards, let's get them in frame there. I go ahead and take my boss monsters. I'm going to randomly shuffle those. And I'm going to take one. And I'm going to put him on the bottom of the deck. So that is step one of setup. Now I'm going to prepare the dungeon row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the door cards. Right, remember these. For the components video, there are five of these. And I'm going to go ahead and take and put that on top. And then I'm going to go ahead and count off five cards underneath it. One, two, three, four, five. And I put that out there. And that's the first level of the dungeon. And I take the next door card. And I do it again. Second level of the dungeon. Another door card. Third level. Fourth level. And then finally, I've got the fifth level of the dungeon with the boss monster underneath. 
I'm going to zoom this out a little bit here. So, we've got all five levels. We're almost set to go. The next thing I want to do is prepare to supply, which simply means I take the four different item cards. The sword, the key, the crystal ball, and the torch. And I put them above the dungeon row. Next step is to assign characters. You essentially randomly pick characters. So for this particular game, for this particular game, let's just assume it's a four player game. So one, two, three, four. He sits out got the warrior for player one the warrior gets two gold so we would simply mark that on this card we have the wizard who gets a gold and two crystal balls so he would take two of those crystal ball cards up here and we got the explorer who gets three gold and a torch so we take a torch card for the explorer. And last but not least, we have the knight who gets a sword and one gold. So as I stated in the components portion of this video, each of them would get a bad card in this to mark their gold with. And then they would get life tokens equal to their value. They would also all get a power deck. So this is, I should say this game is now set up to play and then what we would do is we would take the door off and set up the first room. I'm sorry, the first dungeon level. Which would be, we'd have a boulder trap in the first room, a vault in the second room, treasure room, another treasure room, and a dark room. That would be our first level. So here we have the boulder trap coming up first. And basically, um, players are going to throw in their cards and try and... Uh, defeat that trap I'll get to that in a second and then we would have a vault room two treasure rooms and then something in the dark now the Explorer has a torch he's gonna have the option to pick up more torches as is everybody else he can use it right now if he wants to if I was playing him I would Since I'm playing everybody i will go ahead and the torch and then this is what the Explorer would see no one else would see this so don't tell the other players it is another vault room. So there are absolutely no monsters. And I would probably take a closer look at that. There's no monsters here. So, um, now the other players don't know that. Only the explorer knows it. So basically, they're going to play cards. The only bad thing here is the trap. So we'll get back to this in just one second. Okay, so let's take a look at the only bad thing on this level. This is the boulder trap. So the boulder trap, these icons might be uh, hard to figure out if you haven't played a game yet, but um, essentially uh, the book covers the different types of traps. There's not too many. So the boulder trap, what it's going to happen here is the player with the highest amount of health is going to take that much damage, either 3, 2, or 1, based on the highest power card played by all the players. Okay, So we just started. No one's taken any damage, so the person with the highest amount of health is the warrior at 10. Okay, so he's obviously not going to put in a 3, 4, or 5 power card. But other players might if somebody wants to um, if somebody wants to inflict a lot of damage to him. Say like the wizard wants to knock off some of his health. He could play his 5 power card and then he would take 3. But it's the highest total. It's not a common accumulation 
cumulative total. So if uh, the other three players play and the highest card put out there is a two, he's not going to take any damage. So let's just say that that's what happened and um, everybody threw out and somebody played a three. That means the warrior would take one damage, he would remove one cube. And then this room is now done. Come to the next room. It's a vault. Pretty much what you play is what you're going to get. So if you play a 1, you're going to get a torch. A 2, you're going to get a crystal ball. A 3, you're going to get a key. A 4, a sword. And a 5 is going to get you back a help. So let's just say that our, uh, our lovely explorer decided he wanted another torch. So he played a 1 and got a torch. So, multiple people can play the same number. They will get uh, the items as long as there's an item available. Treasure room. I covered this in the setup video. Two treasure chests here. Highest power card is going to get a three. A tie splits the three gold. Uh, second highest is going to get two. Unlike most games where there's a tie, let's say two people played a four power card, you don't add those two numbers up and then split it. They're only splitting this. So people can tie each other out of treasure. And somebody can come in and low ball and get some other treasure. So you've got two of those. Another one right after that. And then finally a vault. So at the end of a level. The adventurers rest. And what resting means is they get back all of their power cards. So, um, you know, there's a chance, unless you use some of the special items, you're going to, well, there's a good chance, unless you use some of the special items, you're going to play all of your power cards. So you get them back for the next level. And then you would simply rinse and repeat until you got out of the dungeon. Um, like I said, when you get out, whoever has the most gold wins, but the person with the lowest amount of health is going to take damage. So there's always that to keep in mind. And finally, the boss monster, there are, I'll show you this in the rule book instead of me going through them, there's a little guide of all the icons, the boss monsters do various things. Uh, the one uh, flip in the rules is, when you get to the boss monster, you're able to play two power cards if you should have them, and add them together. So if you have a three and a five left for some reason, because you played item cards, you can play both of those against the boss monster uh, on your turn. The boss monsters are pretty hard to beat. So this is Dungeon Raiders. Like I said, it's a pretty quick game. Three to five players. There's a two-player um, two variant, which personally, I don't think it plays very well at two. So you need three to five. Uh, I really like it. Check it out.